See it as you wish it to be. Imagine it being the way you are. Don't face the reality you do not like. Mock up the one you like and face that. One of my greatest joys came through thoroughly understanding something that most people do not really understand. It is called the Man of La Mancha. Don Quixote de La Mancha. Rent the movie starring Peter O'Toole. This was the most suppressive period in our history when people were being tortured for not thinking the correct thoughts. They were far better than the Church of Scientology in being able to torture people for not thinking. The movie opens and this playwright, along with his sidekick, are putting a play on in this filthy 13th century inn or whatever century it was, mocking the Inquisition, like Mary Marin used to do. (laughs) Mocking the bullshit. You think this is either very stupid or very courageous. In marches the soldiers of the Inquisition. The people in the village were coming out, a little play, a little joy, a little smile. But as the soldiers march in, march in they are invited back into terror. They take the invitation to be afraid. They mock up what could happen to them, that they could be tortured, that they could be killed. And they back away, not realizing that the only power that the suppressive has is your belief that they can negatively affect you. They are taken to the dungeon, and as they're on the way to the dungeon, they go by a donkey cart that is covered with a tarp, and out the back of it are these white bodies that have been purified by the Inquisition. They are lowered into a dungeon. The soldiers carry their large trunk of props. Peter O'Toole is holding the manuscript of the story closely to his chest as a valued possession, which he doesn't want to lose. They lift up the ladder and they are in a pitch dark environment and then they are suddenly attacked by all of these poor souls that have been living in terror and fear, awaiting the trial of the Inquisition in filth and having nothing. So they attack the trunk of props to rip them open. Anything is of value, anything. They attempt to rip the manuscript away from Peter O'Toole and he screams to be allowed to have a trial to keep the manuscript. He's in a dungeon. He asks for a trial among the people in the dungeon awaiting. The leader of the people thinks this would be a nice idea. (laughs) Let's have a trial. So he appoints a jury. He appoints a prosecutor. He's about to appoint a defendant, and Peter O'Toole insists that he will defend himself. (laughs) Ha ha, the fool. As As his defense, he does the following soliloquy, beautiful soliloquy. He says... I will impersonate a man. His name? Alonzo Quijana, a country gentleman no longer young. Being retired, he has much time for books, and he reads them from morn till night and off through the night till morn again, and what he reads oppresses him, fills him with indignation at man's murderous ways toward man. He ponders the problem. How to make better a world where evil brings profit and virtue none at all. He lays down the melancholy burden of sanity. I love that line. He lays down the melancholy burden of sanity and conceives of the strangest project ever imagined to become a knight errant and to roam the world in search of adventure. No longer will he be known as Alonzo Quijana, but a dauntless knight known as Don Quixote de la Mancha. And he begins prouncing around the dungeon. I am I, Don Quixote, the Lord of La Mancha. My destiny calls and I go. And the wild winds of fortune shall carry me onward, whithersoever they blow. In the movie, it goes out of the dungeon. You think you're going to see this great knight. What do you see? This old man, Alonzo Quijana, a country gentleman, pretending to be a knight, sitting on a broken horse with a bent, rusty lance, with his sidekick. He attacks a windmill like it was a dragon, and it catches his spear and throws him to the ground. And he said, oh, pretty good battle, huh? <laughs> 
He sees an inn and he goes, oh, yonder castle. He tells his squire to go tell him that the knight comes to the castle. He sees the castle. He sees that as he wishes it to be. Most of people don't realize he made a conscious decision to see it as he wished it to be. So his squire goes to the inn and says, you know, my, you know, my master's like, uh, <laughs> thinks he's a knight, you know, and uh, would you mind playing along with... Uh, the guy goes, what is he, crazy? He says, well, well I, don't, I don't want to say that, but uh, has he got any money? Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of money. He's a rich, you know, oh, okay, we'll play along with him. So he goes in there. Everything he sees, he sees a traveling barber. The barber's coming by. He's got one of those tin pans on his head with, with a little notch out of it where you put it underneath the chin and you shave somebody. He sees it and he goes, the golden helmet of Mambrino. When worn by a knight of a true heart, it renders him invincible. And the barber is singing, I can hear the cuckoo singing in the cuckoo berry tree. And his sidekick says, if he says that that's a helmet, I suggest that you agree. But it will not make him bold. See, what is those people in? They're stuck in the reality. They're facing a reality that says, no, it won't be magical. But he doesn't. He puts on the helmet. Golden helmet of Mambrino, there can be no helm like thee. Thee and I now, ere I die now, will make golden history. He sees the horror there, Aldonza who's serving the men, he sees her as my lady, Dulcinea. She thinks he's crazy. He keeps talking about the quest. And she says, what's this quest? You're on this quest. What the hell, what the hell is this quest? To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To try when your arms are too weary. To reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. To fight for the right without question or pause. To march into hell for a heavenly cause that I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lay calm when I'm laid to my rest and the world will be better for this. That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his lance ounce ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. When Ron talked about auditors, that's what you are. That's what you all are. You are striving for the dream. Don't get distracted by the bullshit in the world. It goes back to the dungeon, and the prosecutor is saying, Are you crazy? You're sitting in a dungeon. You are awaiting the Inquisition, where it is likely you will be tortured to to death. And you're singing, you're being a knight, pretending that you are a knight. See, the reality does that all the time. That's what the news does. It invites you to put your attention on the crap. That's what the idea of the New World Order does. That's what the invitation to oppose something does to come off of the dream. And they're yelling at Peter O'Toole in the dungeon, face life as it is. And the prosecutor breaks through his resolve, if you will, knocks out for a moment, momentarily his TR0, his resolve in holding the vision of a glorious future. By the way, the universe is filled with magnificent beings, not SPs. There are more grains of sand than there are There are more stars than there are grains of sand on every beach on this planet. And the beings out there are magnificent. I swear to you, I am in communication with them. The very contact of them throws me into ecstasy. They are magnificent beyond your wildest dreams. The percentage that are into domination, control, and suppression would represent 17 grains of sand on the planet. The universe is full of magnificence. And they were telling Peter O'Toole to face life as it is. And he gave this final soliloquy, which I will leave you with. Wonderful, glorious, beautiful friends. 
They told him to face life as it is, and he said, Life as it is? I have lived for over 40 years, and I have seen life as it is. Pain, misery, cruelty beyond belief. I have seen my comrades die in battle, or more slowly, under the lash in Africa. These were men who saw life as it is. But they died despairing. No glory, no brave last words. Only their eyes filled with confusion, questioning why. I do not think they were asking why they were dying, but why they had ever lived. Who knows where madness lies? Perhaps to be too practical. To seek treasure where there is only trash. Too much sanity may be madness, and maddest of all, to see life as it is and not as it should be. Thank you.